Hi, after we define the axioms of probability, so let's get back to the topics of independent events. So let's get some review on independence. We have already discussed independence events for two events. So let's A, B events. And we define that uh, even A and B are independent if and, and only if uh, probability of A remains the same even when we know that B has occurred. Okay, so this definition is kind of fine. So that's that's why we use it in the beginning, but it's kind of uh, restrictive because uh, this term is only defined when probability of B equals to uh, is non-zero. Okay, so we're gonna change this definition a little bit to that. Uh, so we're gonna say that events A and B are independent if the probability of A and B equals probability of A times the probability of B. So this is essentially the same as the above, but uh, it's defined when uh, probability of B equals zero as well. Okay, so we're gonna use this definition instead. Okay, and this actually imply what we want. Okay, so this imply that if they are independent, so if this is true, then uh, and PB is greater than zero, then probability of A remains the same given b okay all right so let's have a quick check okay so uh we consider an event a and b which are disjoint okay and they are have both of them have non zero of probability of appear of occurring okay is it possible that a and b are independent so let let me give you a few seconds to think and if you need more time you can definitely pause the video all right um, so the fact that they are depend independent is that if they are independent then we know that probability of a and b a, a intersection b equals if they are independent okay so we need to figure out that if this is an an uh, equation or not, right? But we know that they are disjoint, okay? So from that we know that the probability that they appear at the same time is 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 zero because this is the probability of the zero set that is zero, okay? Then uh, uh, what else? Then we know that, however, we know that this probability is greater than zero and this is greater than zero, so the whole term is greater than zero. Okay, so this can't be equal. Okay, that's so the answer for this is no. Okay, let's talk about the case when you have more, more than two events. So, when you have uh, recall that when you have two events A and B and they are deep independent we have this fact and this is uh, this might not might be some just some little fact right but the fact that you can uh, spread this uh, two events out as, as the as the as uh, two factors of this is really important in some other applications later on uh, so when we talk about independence for three events we probably want the same, so we want to be able to say that if we have this, then we have this. Okay, so we want to say something like this, but probably we require something more. Okay, than just this. Okay, so let's as as as, as an uh, uh, practice, we let's try to expand the term this a, b, and c probability of A, B, and C out for a little bit. Okay, so if we look at this uh, as as the probability that uh, suppose B and C occur first and then you have A, if that's the case then uh, we can expand this into something like this. 
so it's a probability that B and C has occurred and then A occur after this so given B and C alright now uh, probably of B and C you can uh, look at this as the two steps by thinking about uh, C has occurred and then B have to B has to occur after that so this in turn can be written as probability of C um, probability of B given C and then times probability of A given B and C okay so this this is one way to to write it okay but that's not the only way to express this term so you can write it differently like this so this is like a probability of let's a occur right and then you have to make sure that given that a has occurred b and c has occurred as well right um, from that you can rewrite it a little bit more by thinking about the probability of B and C has occurred given A is the probability that okay B has occurred given A times the probability that C has occurred given B and A or A and B right so this is another way to write it and they have to be all equals to probability of A uh, probability of A, B, C, right? And and this somehow should give you the idea that uh, if you try to match this, uh, this probability of B given A should be equal to probability of B given C, right? And probability of, uh, say, something like A should be equal to probability of A given B and C. And this, they all have to be equal somehow so that uh, you can factor out this. Uh, you want all the terms to be equal to p of a right times p of b times p of c right so this is not the definition but let's this is just some practice on uh you know some manipulation of uh probability terms okay so uh, from that we can sort of argue that uh you, you want this to be equal to that right and this term to be equal to this and this they are equal already right and for that as well so so it means that uh, we want all the not only the independence at the top level right we, we want every term to be uh, independent so this is so we end up with this definition for independence event for three events okay so if you have events a b and c they are mutually independent if and only if okay for any set of uh, three events they they are the the probability of uh, they all happens equals the multiplication the product of each separate events events and for a pair of events okay it have to be the you know the probability of the the, the intersection of the events equals to the product of the separate events the probability of the separate events and this has to be true for all all combination of these two events okay so that's the definition of uh, mutually independent for uh, two event uh, three events okay so let's look at uh, what the first example okay so if we toss three coins independently the probability and we know that the probability that the first coin the coin one turns up here is is well, 0 0.5 the probability that coin 2 turns up here is 0 0.7 and the probability that coin 3 turns up here is uh, 0.4 so what's the probability that all the coins turn up here okay so how how, how are you going to compute this so try let's try to be uh, really precise so let 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 me define uh, three events. So the first event A one is the event that the coin, the coin one turns up here. Okay, so this is 
uh, event A1. And also, uh, let me define event A2 similarly. So, call it to turn up head. So, this event A2. And event A3 is the event that coin free turns up head. Okay. So, we want to compute the probability of A1, A2, A3. Okay. So, from, from the uh, definition of conditional probability, you can sort of spread the thing out by uh, and rewrite, rewrite this as PA1 times PA2 given A1 times PA3 given A1 A2, right? And because we know that they are all independent, right? So uh, instead of trying to figure out all this, okay, we know that there has to be uh it has to be probably a one times probability of a two times probability of a three right away because they are independent okay so this has to be equal to that and this equal to that and finally this equal to that so you get this uh or you can just use the the definition right away so the probability of uh this the intersection of these three events equals to the product okay you can use this or you can take a detour and rewrite this and then and write just just the fact that you get this and and in the end you get that uh, this is equal to 0 0.3 times 0.5 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.4 okay so that's how to use the independent independence now let's look at the case when you have more than three events okay so we're gonna say that for events uh, a1 a2 up to a n we say that the, these events are mutually independent or just independent okay if can you guess it so for three events we we say that uh, okay for any combination of the other events right so if you look at A1, uh, <coughs> A1 has to be independent from A2, right? And also from A, A2 intersection A3. So uh, if you have more than more than three events, everything should be the same. So we're going to say that they are mutually independent. If uh, we have that any event is independent of any intersection of other events. Okay, so formally... Uh, we have this so we're gonna say that these events are mutually independent if for any uh, subset of this uh, indexes index set uh, so J say like uh, uh, any combina uh, any subset of this set or uh, the intersection of these uh, events okay in the set equal uh, the probability of this intersection equals the probability the product of the probability of each individual event okay so let, let's uh, try to see how to we're gonna use it uh, so if you have a coin with uh, uh, with probably one-third of turning up head if it is tossed that uh, four times independently so what's the probability of the out that the outcome is uh, if you get uh, all three heads okay so we can define uh, four uh, events so a1 is the event that uh, first toss is head okay and in general ai is uh, the i th toss is head that's the definition of event AI and the probability that, that the outcome is uh, three uh, four hits is is this right the probability that you get a1 a2 a3 a4 and note that we know that uh, we did the experiment independently so we get that uh, we can factor out of this they are all mutually independent so it's equal to p1 a p a 
three and PA four, right? And each of these uh prob probably that the first toss comes up here is one third and everything is one third, right? So you get this to be one third to the four. Okay, so that's the answer. Now, so uh, if if we have the same coin, uh, so what's the prob probability that the outcome is this? Okay, can you uh, try to figure this out? So I wait for I'll I'll, I'll wait for a few seconds. All right. So we have so you you can do it in many ways. Uh, let's me define AI event event AI uh, the the I toss comes up hit. So this probability is uh, probability of a I a one, and then gonna be a two complement right the complement of a two a three a four and they are all independent okay because we we toss the coin independently the probability that uh, a one occurs or a two not occur should be the same um, okay so as a practice you might want to prove this uh, practice uh, that if a even a and B are independent. Show that A and B complement are also independent. Okay, so try to do this. Okay, if we know that, uh, then we can do this. It's just probably the same. It's not that hard. So uh, for this, you can factor everything out. So you get uh, probably of a four, and in the end, so this is uh, one third times two third times one third one third. Okay, so that's uh, what you get two over. Okay. Right, and uh, again the same coin, and we the same experiment. So what's the probability that we get exactly two tails? Okay. So previously we look at each just one exact outcome, right? Now uh, we want we want something more uh, general. So we want that uh, we get exactly two tails. So uh, what are the possible outcome that looks like this? So the event. So we're gonna have event. Uh, so let's let's figure out this out first. It's gonna be head, tail, head, head, tail, tail, right? Head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, and finally. Tail, tail, head, head. Right. Is that everything? Go for everything? Oh, okay. Uh, I missed this. Tail, head, head, tail. Okay. So that's the uh, everything? Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six outcomes that get you exactly two tails. Okay. Can you figure this out, the number of these outcomes out, without actually writing everything down? Okay. So, uh, uh, exercise. Find out this without, if, if this is correct. Okay. And, and, and you know that for each outcome, we can think of this as one event. Okay. And, and so let's say, let's call this uh, event B1, that you get this, this for this B2. B three, B four, B five, and B six. Okay, so the probability of say this is this event, call let's call it event E. Okay, 
So probability of E equals because these these six events are mutually disjoint, okay, M mutually exclusive or disjoint. So we know that uh, from the axiom of probabilities, you know that it's uh, the probability is of the union, right? E, e is the union of these these events should be the sum, okay, plus p b six, okay. Now, for each of these, you can calculate the probability, right? From using the uh, you define uh, a one, a two, okay, and so on. And and with that, with the same uh, technique that we used before, we can conclude that uh, basically b p of e i equals. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for another five seconds. If you need more time, just pause the video. All right, so you get that this is uh, what uh, hit, right? Hit. They are ind independent, so you can just multiply everything. So this is uh, 2 square over 3 fourth. OK, and, and if you look carefully, uh, if you calculate probability of B2, you're going to get the same thing, right? So one third, two third, one third, two third, and you get the same. OK, can you show that they are going to have the same probabilities? So let me claim that they have the same probability of occurring. So you can get that this is going to be 6 times 2 to uh, square to the 3 to the okay so that's uh, if you try to uh, make it nice uh, so you get this to be uh, 2 to the uh, 3 oh that's, that's nice right cute okay right so that's the the answer for this okay all right so there, there's another notion of independence uh, this is uh, what we call a pairwise independence. Um, for for normal or standard or mutual independence, we uh, we gonna say that uh, these uh, events are mutually independent. If any combination of uh, uh, these events, the probability of the intersection equals the product of each uh, individual uh, uh, event inside this uh, combination. But for pairwise so when we say pairwise, it's gonna be like each pair. Okay, so if you have uh, uh, four events, a one, a two, a three, a four. Pairwise mean uh, these are independent. These are independent, 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 and that's independent. So I think that's all. Okay, so all these pairs are independent. Okay, so uh, for any pair. And if it's this case, then we call that we say that it's pairwise independence. Okay. The question is, the question is is pairwise independence implies mutually independence. The inver uh, the converse is is true definitely because mutually independence require all the requirements for the uh, satisfy all the requirement for pairwise independence. But is pairwise independence enough to imply mutually independence? So the answer is no. And there's a nice counter example that I would uh, suggest that try you try to to come up with it. Come up with this example. And you have fun, okay? So that that I, I hope there will be another clip uh, talking about this counter example. It's really nice. Um, I hope uh, my my hint is that you try to use uh, just uh, three events and and think about coin tosses. All right. Okay. So uh, this is the end of the segment, and this is the question of the segment. Um, again, let's um, we, we have some a few example previously about a coin that comes up with probably one-third. 
So let's try to abstract that a little bit. So suppose that we have a coin that turns up here with probability p, and it's tossed n times, okay, not just four times. So what's the probability of getting exactly k heads? Can you find uh, the 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 close form for this probabilities? All right. So have fun. I'll see you in the next clip.